Hello Medfield, thank you for watching Medfield TV. Our guest tonight is somebody I think you've seen before. It's Mike Sullivan, who's gonna tell us about happenings in, in Town Hall and happenings in Medfield as well. So we'll see what he has on his agenda tonight. Also, I asked him uh, one specific question he could address is, what does he think makes a good town official? Because I know several people are thinking of running for different, different offices in the spring. Uh, so let's see what Mike thinks might make somebody a good candidate or a good official. Okay, so it's all yours, Mike. Sure, uh, what makes a good, well, there's a lot of different qualities, and I think it depends on the uh, particular person. I think to a certain extent, they have to follow their own personality. Um, and um, I find probably one of the most important things is someone that has the ability to listen and listen carefully to That's what really people important. are saying. That's really important. I would put that number one. Because sometimes people want to and I think it's something public officials can be guilty of. They want to talk mm -hmm. and they want to get their ideas out um, when frequently, uh, if you can listen uh, and hear what people are saying and then respond to that. Um, but I, I think uh, there's several other factors. I think the ability to um, research issues to find out what the real issues are, what the real facts are, um, and that can take uh, a while to find out. It can take some digging um, rather than, you know, an off-the-cuff response mm -hmm. to something uh, based on facts. I think an open mind is really important. Yes, yeah. And, um, and, and I think uh, uh, somebody with a sense of humor because Lord knows with the, the way the world is today, if you don't have a sense of humor, <laughs> you're in rough shape. And particularly as a public official, you have to be able to let the, let the uh, water roll off your back. Mm -hmm. Because if you take things personally, uh, you won't last very long. So, um, you know, sometimes I'll go home from a meeting and I can't get to sleep right away because there's some little thing that sets you off and you get upset yeah. about it. That's why we used to go out for a couple of beers or a glass of wine after meetings. That's right. That's a, it was a good thing. A little sedative, yeah. But I, but I think it, it, uh, if by the next morning I would say, oh, well, it really doesn't, it isn't that important. Things, this too will pass. You know, so. Do you think the length of time they've lived in Medfield is important? Well, very few town administrators live in the towns that they manage. I'm one of the exceptions. Uh, most of them, uh, particularly those with families, don't live in the towns because they don't want their children, for example, or their spouses exposed to uh, uh, some of the gossip and bickering that goes on, or um, especially if they have school children. I think it's particularly hard on school kids where they go and their friends might have heard something at home said about their parent, and uh, it, it isn't uh, um, something that you want to expose your kids to. I have to I ask would, my kids if they ever got any negative comments while all the years maybe, I was serving. Maybe, maybe they haven't told you. So. No, no, but I, I, now they're all grown I, up and old, I can ask them. I, I, I always I remember people saying that the uh, hardest uh, job for a kid in town as being the son of a of a police chief or a minister. That's exactly what I've always thought, those two. Yes, I've yes. asked Bob what, what about that, yeah. and also Bill Mann. Exactly um, right, they're the two the hardest. Yeah, but, um, but you know, and I think, um, as I said, public officials, good public officials come in all shapes and sizes, and um, but I think if, if they listen, they research things well, and they keep a sense of humor are probably the most important things. Yeah, I know when I ran, uh, one person told me I hadn't lived in town long enough. I think it was it been only 15 years or so when I ran the first time. Uh, and also uh, several people told me women shouldn't run. And I think it's a great thing, which we, I like to, I'm not knocking the three selectmen now who happen to me, men, but I think it is great to have, a, have women on different boards. I, I think women uh, are much more, uh, the peacemakers, the conciliators, they uh, will try to resolve issues mm -hmm. where too often men are getting kind of a, a, a battle mo mm -hmm. mode. So I think women have a very important role to play in politics. And, um, and of course these days, if you look around the world, a lot of the prime ministers uh, 
uh, or presidents, if you look at Germany and um, uh, the uh, World Bank, I think, is a female of several con countries now. Uh, England has had two female prime ministers, mm -hmm. so uh, it's, uh, it's cer they've certainly come of age, so to speak, yeah. and it's long overdue. But they're, you know, they say there still aren't enough women uh, in politics. If you look in Congress, what there's maybe a handful of women right. in the Senate and. They're probably more in the House of Representatives. But, but here we have school committee. Disproportionately. We have a lot of women on the school committee here. Well, and I think Library because board. Um, they are more interested, I always say when people come to town, when their children are young, they're, they're more interested in schools and park and recreation and the library. As their children grow up and don't want them around as much, mm -hmm. they want to be with their friends and whatnot. Yeah. I think then they, they branch off into other areas and get interested in other aspects of town government. So I think it's perfectly natural that you would see more women on the school committee because they're more closely tied with, for the most part, with the day-to-day -day activities of their kids. Um, so. Um, I think you have to be willing to forget because uh, I got a lot of lot of complaints about different votes I made over the years in the Warren Committee and yeah. and the selectmen. Of course, and that's normal. You expect that the whole town is not going to agree with every vote you make. Yes. But yeah. I did get several, several people f several years later that would call. One, one in particular really surprised me because he'd been most adamant that I was wrong. He called a few years after it was issued, so, and he said, I apologize, you were right. Yeah, it, it doesn't really good to hold grudges. I know uh, sometimes at town meeting when there's been a controversial vote, I try, because we sit up the front facing out over the audience and sometimes I'll try not to look to see how people are voting because I really don't want to know how they right. voted. So, um, and, and it doesn't do any good to old grudges. It, and, and I've learned over the years some of the people I started out arguing with and having fights with ended up as, as good friends, mm -hmm. as, you That's know, true. Close working, close work and relationship and uh, and you say, well, if I had held a grudge against them, I never would have been able to benefit from mm -hmm. uh, their help later on. But you have so. to have a thick skin, though. Yeah, that comes with the, it comes with politics. Mm -hmm. I think I, if, you, yeah. if you don't have one starting out, you, You're gonna get one. <laughs> you, you either get one pretty quick or you get out of politics. Yeah. So. Um, but do you think attendance at things like town meeting are important? Because I do. I don't think I'd want to vote for somebody to, for a school committee or selectmen or, or we don't like the Warren Committee, but other major boards, if they hadn't gone to town yeah. meeting and hadn't gone to different meetings of different committees. I, yeah, I think uh, it just shows that a concern and interest uh, voting tenants at town meeting, uh, you know, occasionally going to other boards or committee meetings or re even reading the paper, finding out mm -hmm. what's going on in town. Uh, although sometimes I read the paper and I wonder if I was really at that meeting. So, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I think uh, uh, all of those things are, are important and um, people have uh, varying degrees of ability to uh, deal with those issues. I think one of the things that can be a problem, sometimes you'll get a person that runs for office what do you call the one issue candidate? Yes. They run because they have some particular concern, whether it be they want a sidewalk or build a new school or change or the library, they, whatever. Or they want a park and rec building or they want something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's their only issue. And once that issue is resolved one or the other, they really don't have a lot else to contribute. So I think the one issue candidate is, is uh, not a good thing. So it, you have to take a broad perspective and say, okay, because um, when you get in there, as you well know, the things you end up dealing with are totally different than what you expected to deal with when you ran. I mean, you know, you go in thinking you're gonna solve the great issues of the town <laughs> and you end up with dog complaints. I know. Or, uh, or garbage complaints, or yeah. uh, and yeah. it's uh, that's true. Uh, it's the mundane things, yeah. but they're necessary. You have to deal with them. That's you have life. To be able to, yeah, yeah. That is life. It's like what do they say in marriage? It's is not the the big issues that get you down. It's whether you put the 
cap back on the toothpaste too. <laughs> that's true. That is true. It's <laughs> somewhat the same in politics. It's how you handle the the minutia. So. Yeah, I had never been to any of the other committee meetings till I started writing for the newspaper years ago, and I was amazed to go to. I went to Park and Rec. I went to school committee. I went to Water and Sewer Board. I mean, you name it. Selectman meeting, of course. Um, I was very surprised at the people that were there and went on. It was a real education. Yeah. It was a daily yeah. newspaper, so I had to write a lot of stuff. I had to go to a lot of meetings and. Yeah, and you had to go home and write it at midnight. I, I, so, and this so. is before the internet, so yeah. I had to yeah. type it and have it ready in my mailbox by two in the morning. Yeah, yeah, that was tough. And, but I learned a lot. And, and nowadays, it's uh, uh, between the taping of the meetings and and now over there, we're getting pretty close to having uh, voice recognition on computers where you mm -hmm. won't even have to type it up. You'll just yep. recite it and it'll type it up for you. So yep, it's going to be scary. great. scary. So you won't have to drive your car. You won't have to type your own <laughs> story. Uh, who knows what else you, uh, you I, I saw in the news the other night, the state police now, uh, this is, happened to be on New Hampshire, they're using drones to film accidents. I heard that. Uh, that interesting? And they said it saves them hours. I would think so. Free, and frees up the, uh, yep. allows them to open up the road much quicker Absolutely. because they have photographs of the But who would have, would have thought of that 20, 50 years ago? Yes, yeah. So. It's a different world. Yes, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. <laughs> <laughs> not, well, not every new invention is, uh, is 100% uh, for the good. Sometimes yeah. there's, there's the good and the evil with these things too. Okay, what's good and bad about Medfield now, right now? Anything good going on? Uh, yeah, I think what? so. I okay, think, like what? I think uh, we um, are uh, in the middle of the budget period. We managed to get through another year uh, without an override. I think that was a good thing. It is a good thing. Um, I think we have uh, gotten some very good department heads uh, on board. Uh, Mo Goulet, the new public works director, is doing a terrific job. He is. Um, Jerry McCarty, the new uh, facilities. facilities manager, he's doing a great job. Uh, I'm hoping that the library directors will find a library director as good as the one that just left. She was only here for a short time, but she did a terrific mm -hmm. job. And I think, uh, you know, when people come to Medfield, like we've had the auditors here this week doing an audit of the town books, and. Um, and uh, Chief Hollingsworth has, has been filling in on a temporary basis for uh, until they, we find a replacement for, for the fire, Kingsbury. Yeah. And, and they all make the comment that the uh, people in Midfield seem to get along so well. They work together. They said in many communities, town officials won't speak to each other. They're always fighting with each other. And here we seem to be able to uh, uh, cooperate That's a and good thing. do Absolutely. joint ventures. You know, if you look at our school in town, uh, the, one of the classic cases is the school and the town fighting. Mm -hmm. um, well, we have combined our IT departments, we're combining our facilities operations, uh, we've combined a lot of our financial operations, and uh, we we joke, we kid about each other and, and you know, make accusations about who's the big spender and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> but we get along, we laugh about it. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a very good thing about the town. The other thing I think of the volunteers, you know, how many groups there are other volunteers this weekend. I mean, if you look at this weekend, we've got um, the uh, uh, Garden Club uh, uh, holiday. Green sale, green yep. sale. You've got the angel run, you've got the Christmas tree lighting, mm -hmm. and the, uh, uh, oh, I forget what they call it, the, the event they're having Friday night alone, the Christmas tree sale, where they have the uh, uh, merchants and oh, yeah. food vendors right. and everything else. Um, and that's, that's just, uh, and then they have the Christmas parade on on Saturday, and that's just one weekend. Yeah. Uh, so there is an awful lot going on, and uh, because we have so many um, 
volunteers that are willing to step up That's and great. to the plate. Hope it keeps the other, up. The other thing I think is, is a very positive thing is, is the downtown. I think uh, I remember 10, 15 years ago, the kids in Medfield used to refer to it as Deadfield. Mm -hmm. And I think now, uh, if you come downtown on a Friday or Saturday night, there's people walking all over the place. There are several restaurants. Uh, uh, it's it's an active, vibrant downtown. Yeah, it's, it's a good thing. It really is yeah. a good thing. It's a warm feeling. Yes, yeah. I think some of the things that uh, we're doing with affordable housing now, not everyone will agree, but it is a requirement that we are obligated to comply with under state law. And I think the way the town has addressed it has been uh, pretty good. You know, we've tried to have um, developments that were not too large that fit into the area and uh, <clears throat> and of course uh, not everyone wants them in their neighborhood so you're never going to get a hundred percent right. agreement That's but true. I think it's uh, uh, I think a lot of people have have subjected themselves to a lot of criticism from people that don't want things but they they persist in the uh, they try to do what's best for the town. I hope so. For the whole town. So, so I think a lot of positive things. Um, negative things. Um, I go back to my feeling about state and federal government and <laughs> paying the bills. You know, I think uh, we're we're facing uh, some long-term liabilities for our pension and retiree health insurance that have to be addressed and. Uh, we're trying to address those as best we can, but with the financial condition of the state these days, we're not going to get a lot of help from the state. So we're kind of on our own. Yeah. Um, I think Proposition 2 and a half was kind of a disappointment. It goes way back, but people expected that it was going to reduce the burden on they the property really tax. They really thought so. And it didn't. No, no. You know, we're paying a higher percentage. It did for the cities. Um, but. Um, it didn't for the towns. Mm -hmm. The towns are still overly reliant on the property tax. And of course, one of the other bad features of the town is the traffic. Sure. And I don't know what we can do about that. I'm a little concerned myself about the train traffic coming through town. I think it's going to get worse there. I know they're rebuilding the tracks throughout the town. and uh, The main thrust seems to be to get uh, people to the Patriots game, but I think that's a short-term uh, thing. And Maybe. I think eventually, with all the land around uh, Gillette Stadium, you'll see an effort to yeah. to uh, put more something in housing or something that will support the... There's, there's a lot of stores at Patriot Place that have never been rented out. Do you think more buses coming back to Midfield would help with the traffic? No. You don't, because the traffic is hideous. Uh, unless the buses go to train stations, you know, because if, you, if you're in a bus, you st the bus is still stuck in traffic. So, uh, but there could be 20 people in the bus, which would be 20 fewer cars, cars on the road. Right, but you have 40 new houses being built in the meantime. Yeah, that's, so I know, and that's a problem. Uh, it's uh, only going to get worse, and <coughs> I, I don't know what the answer is. What one of my fears is they will try to turn Boston into another New York City. Build, 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 build. You know, if you go in there now, it's like Crane City, and everybody says, "Oh, it's good for the economy. It's good for jobs. It may be good in, for the economy in the short term." Is it? I think what we have to think about is: Is it good in the long term? Yeah. Does it really create a better? environment where people want to live? What does it become so congested and overrun and run down um, that people don't want to live here anymore? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, I certainly wouldn't want to live in the uh, outskirts of New York City. Um, and, you know, are the suburbs going to become the outskirts of Boston when Boston and Cambridge are putting up all these high rises? Mm -hmm. And um, if you read about the the rents, I think the rents in the city of Cambridge went up something like thirty percent last oh. year. 
um, people are being pushed out of the city uh, so that they can put up more million dollar condos. Well, where are those people gonna go? Um, and I was listening to an article and said they're, they're going to Lawrence and Lowell and uh, you know, Worcester and Framingham and yeah, and Medfield maybe and Medfield. That's yes. one of the and concerns. I think that's I, sort of the push for the affordable housing in the suburbs. Is, that's one is, of the concerns I hear from people. Why are we making it so dense? There, uh, some people because, are very anti. The developers and the state government. I know. <laughs> have said they want to make they want denser development. They want a booming economy. They want lots of money pouring into the region, and therefore. Um, and, and, but who does that serve? Does that serve the, the people who live in the region or does that serve the people they want to bring into the region? Um, and I think uh, it's a serious question that needs to be asked and I think it needs to be asked to a lot of our public officials at the state and federal levels. So, um, but um, if that makes me sound like a meanie, I guess I am <laughs> a meanie, but I think uh, it, there's a quality of life issue here that I think we may be sacrificing in the name of a booming economy mm -hmm. in a vibrant region. Sometimes you get too vibrant. Yeah, but that could be. So, that could be. Um, I now I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> what else do we want to talk about? Huh? So nothing huge is coming up, that you, uh, uh, certainly town meetings coming up in a few months. Uh, anything new on the state hospital schedule? Uh, last I heard, they are talking about a, a March town meeting, but there's a question whether they'll be able to make that too. Okay. Uh, you know, there's a lot of issues. They are hard at work. They're meeting regularly. They're trying to wrestle with these issues, but there's a lot of issues to wrestle with, and um, they're trying to get a better handle on cost. You know, what the ultimate costs are going to be, and and what the density of development to pay those costs is going to be. And that's not an easy thing because there's a, a lot of work to be done up there. And, and of course, now there's a whole new set of issues with this tax reform bill that's mm -hmm. been proposed because one of the things it contemplates is doing away with historic tax credits. I know. And that was one of the big financing methods that was being proposed for renovating the buildings up the state hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a large portion of the cost of, of renovating the building was was from uh, historic tax credits, and if those are wiped out as part of the tax reform legislation, that yeah. could seriously affect those plans. Make a big difference, yep. And uh, so, and that's got to be played out in the next few months, I assume. So, so um, uh, we are moving ahead with. Uh, uh, some other projects where we're trying to take a look at the uh, uh, North uh, at, at 109 trying to get that and the bridges we uh, met a couple of weeks ago with the uh, uh, district engineer we're part of the Worcester region for Mass Department of Transportation about the uh, cost of repairs to the West Street Bridge. That's a big man. And about the condition of the 109 bridge. And they have uh, agreed that 109 bridge is definitely a state bridge and it's their responsibility. Okay, good. And they have agreed that it, um, that it does need work and that they're gonna try to get that done very quickly. Um, I mean, it's not dangerous or anything, but it does need a lot of work. Okay. Even the condition of the roadway over the river is not so great. Um, and then they have agreed to participate in the cost of the repairs to the West Street Bridge. Okay. Um, they haven't come up with a dollar amount yet or a percentage amount, but they also suggested that we could make some temporary repairs that would give us anywhere from maybe 10 to 30 years and in the meantime, try to get it on the Federal Bridge Program, oh, the West Street okay. Bridge, so that when it, at the end of that time, when it had to be replaced, it could be paid for on the Federal Bridge Program, if in fact there is a Federal Bridge Program by then. Yeah. How about Phillips Street Bridge? Phillips Street Bridge is, uh, you know, people don't realize when you take state money, you go by the state rules, and it takes a long time. 
uh, we did uh, get prices on the decking and that's been ordered it takes I think 12 to 16 weeks to get the decking in Done. so uh, that will probably be a spring project and okay but it's coming um, yes yeah it is in the works it's been a long um, time <laughs> you know uh, I uh, uh, I don't think people understand how slow the bureaucracy can be at times and, and that's a perfect example um, it was that I was talking to uh, um, Jerry McCarty about some of the projects he's working on dealing with other state agencies, some mm -hmm. of the energy projects, and he's running into the same problem. It's tough getting answers yeah, from probably. some of these uh, agencies. That they they want to rush you, but they don't want to be rushed themselves. So, and and sometimes we're to blame too. Um, we're not totally innocent in these things. Sometimes we in the crush to get things done, you tend to push something to the bottom of the pile because more urgent things come up. So, What does the warrant for the town meeting look like it right now? Uh, right now, uh, I put together a, a rough draft because okay. I have to sort of drag it out of people every year. I know. <laughs> um, and they always say, well, we want to go faster, but nothing seems to move fast. Hmm. Um, but I've got about 38 articles right oh, now. Geez, okay. Um, and some of them will come out, you know, there's articles dealing with, uh, well, what, what we want to do about North Street, since we're not going to get funding from the state to rebuild North Street between Dale and Frary. Mm -hmm. um, I've put an article in because I understand several of the school buildings, a couple of school buildings have roof, leaky roofs. Okay. Um, there are articles dealing with uh, uh, the lease law. Some people want to again uh, revise revise the lease law because apparently the way the lease law reads, the dog has to be under control, but not necessarily on a leash. Under voice control, and, right? Or and, on a leash? And, That's and exactly what, right. And what does under control mean? How do you define that? Some one man's uh, ver version of under control is different from another man's Yeah, version. I know, but so I remember the way, that way it was word. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of uh, items like that that uh, will uh, fill up the warrant as time goes along. I still remember so, when the lease law came up at the, at the warrant hearing before the town meeting. Yeah. Somebody stood up and he was against it. He said, leash my grandmother, but don't leash my dog. I still remember that. <laughs> Uh, certainly, a certain gentleman on, on Bridge Street that you probably would know right off. If, but if, if, if I were him, I wouldn't want to have, have that on film. <laughs> I could come back to bite you someday. So. But it was really fun. I, I think we all cracked up when he said, leash my grandmother, but don't leash my dog. It was fun. I hope his grandmother was long gone by that time, <laughs> because I think she would be highly offended, rightfully But so. that was a very controversial but. article when we put it up. That was uh, really controversial. For, fortunately, that was just before I came. That okay, you the, missed that it. That <laughs> the swimming pool. So. Okay, the swimming pool uh, was another one. Yes. Uh, there is uh, articles about senior housing, some proposals. In fact, the selectmen are having a meeting on uh, December 7th at the Senior Center from 4 to 7 to discuss uh, uh, or to get input from seniors about what they'd like to see in terms of senior housing to enable more seniors to stay in town. Mm -hmm. A lot of seniors feel that they're being pushed out the door because of the taxes and the housing costs. So Can't do anything about the taxes that easily. So Yeah, and um, you, you know, um, the thing that it seems to me, I think a lot of people have come to the conclusion that the recession is over and it's time to do all the things that we postponed doing. So uh, it seems like every week I have somebody coming in with another project and I kept thinking well once we got the public safety building done we could take a breather for a while mm -hmm. uh, because they said the Dale Street School would take about three to five years for approval and now they're waiting to see if they can get it approved okay. <coughs> more quickly. Uh, Park and Rec has come up with a report saying they want they need a new facility the Council on Aging would like to expand their facility um, the water and sewer uh, department, the water department particularly, we need to repaint the Mount Ebo water tower. 
uh, which estimates are somewhere around a million dollars to paint that if it has to be painted inside and out. Um, we have to build some sort of a treatment facility to remove iron and manganese from mm. our wells. Um, and it just goes on and on. And then people are looking for new positions uh, all over the place, you know. Uh, Additional staff, you mean? Yes, yes. Mm. Uh, uh, they're talking about, a, I believe, a suicide prevention coordinator. Oh, God, that's, that's sad. They're talking a uh, recycling committee would like a half-time recycling coordinator. The building department would like some assistance with the inspection program. Wow. Uh, the accounting department, Al just left uh, after 17 years with us on start out with the senior tax worker program. Mm -hmm. um, he left so, uh, and uh, we met with the auditors this morning. You wouldn't believe the regulations that are coming down and the paperwork that is being required uh, uh, in every area, whether it's uh, when, you go, when you borrow money, when you try to fund your unfunded liabilities, yep. when you do your annual audit, it's just ream after ream after ream of paper. Um, and I say, well, we're gonna spend all our money doing the paperwork. We won't have any money left to <laughs> do the projects. And, um, so uh, I, I think one of our problems is, and you know, pension costs are going up 10 to 15% a year for the next five years. Oh my God. Told. Our health insurance cost, everybody knows what's happening there. We've been lucky it yeah, hasn't gone up that much, but still there's it's not gonna more go down. than we have for income. And the school budget has been going up about 4% a year, 3 or 4% a year, and that's more than we get. You get 2.5% and 25 How's the school enrollment this year? Uh, they t I think the figure they gave me was something like it was up 106, but I haven't seen the exact figures yet. So It's still no real goals. Um, it's still down considerably yeah. from a few years ago, but I think it, it's a natural cycle. It's what Barry Cole I, I predicted. Remember, remember he said that? The enrollment will, is cyclical. It will mm -hmm. go down, it will go up, it will go down, it will go up. And we've been in a down cycle for about 10, 12 years. A long years. time, yep. And I think we're probably starting an up cycle. Part of it is I think a lot of people that didn't put their houses on the market because the economy was soft. Now that the economy is heated up, are putting their mar their houses on the market and they're selling to young families coming in with children. That could be it, yeah. Uh, because they're the ones that want to move to Medfield primarily because of the schools. Mm -hmm. So, so it's uh, the same old, same old, I guess, yeah. after 40 years, you get used to it and uh, what goes around comes around. But. <laughs> Um, but it's, uh, there's never enough money to do all <laughs> the things that people want to do. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, it's tough and a lot of it falls on the Warren Committee. The, you know, I always say to the Warren Committee, all the other town committees say the yes committees, yes, you can have this, yes, you need this. And then they get to you and you say, yeah. no, we can't afford it. And I said, in some ways, you have the toughest job in town. It was, a, you have to tell it was very interesting. That, yeah, what they can't have. It, it was a very interesting committee to be on because we didn't agree on a single thing. Yeah. Uh, there, there were nine of us, of course. I was the only woman on, and I was the chairman for three years uh, during the first three years of Proposition Two and a Half. And we met numerous times. We had to cut the budgets way back to accommodate the, the new law. And uh, I don't think we agreed on a single thing, but it was east nine to two, three to four, you know, six to three, eight to one, four to five. You just got the votes by bribing them with monkey but, bread. But it was, it was great, but the thing was, we all ended up being good friends. There was never anything nasty about the disagreement. Yeah. And that's what was so yeah. healthy. And that's what a lot of people say they notice about Medfield, that mm -hmm. people seem to be able to disagree, disagree agreeably. And we did. Yeah. We had parties at the end of the year. Yeah. After town meeting, our committee had a party. We invited the selectmen and you. And, uh, and you but we always it. had joke gifts. You had to you had to you had to insult somebody at the, at the party. Yes, bring yes, some gifts. Yeah. If you didn't make fun of them, you weren't uh, doing your job. So. But it was fun. Yeah. Uh, because you made you made friends. I'm sure we made a few enemies along the way, but I think mostly we made friends. Yeah. Yeah, it was did. a very very yeah. good experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Um, 
I, I think it's, uh, that's why I would encourage people to get involved in town government because I think it's, it's a great way to meet people, especially for people that have just moved into the area. Mm -hmm. I know I had a woman call up last week was asking about, you know, what do I do uh, to get a dump sticker and uh, what do I do about this and what do I do about, so I put yeah. together a package and sent them out to her. And, um, and I said, oh, it's the, Christ it's the holiday stroll. That's what okay. I was trying to think of, yeah. So I sent her, they had a, a like a little postcard on that and I put that in. I mm -hmm. said, that'd be a nice thing for a newcomer to take. It would be nice. And see, it, see how things work. And even things like Friends of the Library and mm -hmm. the Sports Boosters Group, New in Town. Sure, the church, church groups are great. great all kinds of people. good things. Yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, most people get involved in things through the through their kids in the school system. So that's where they really meet people. And although I found over the years that seems to be a, a, a problem for people when the kids graduate, they lose touch with, uh, with things because their kids are not in the school system anymore. And so much of their social activity revolving around attending school events mm -hmm. and yeah, school does. fundraising. It did, and yeah. Whatnot. So it's hard. But you and I just had a special experience last weekend. We went to a 90th birthday party. That's right, yes. For the, reti yeah, the yeah, retired police chief, yes. Bill Mann. Yes, it's, it's amazing how mm. many people are in their 90s in town now. It used to be a rarity. Now it's like so, oh, no big deal. Mm -hmm. so, but but uh, he, as police chief, and Joe Ryan as fire chief were terrific. Very honest, straightforward men that lived here in town, and I trusted the pair, both of them. I think they were great to deal with. They yes. really were, yeah. but it was wonderful to see Joe there uh, and uh, to see Bill and his family yes. there. It was good memories. Yes, it is. Because Bill and I taught C CPO together for 30 years. We only we only charged for the cost of the equipment. Yes. We didn't charge for anything else. And we Elizabeth, decided we could have been rich. And Elizabeth was for, was a crossing guard for about 50 years. A long time. Amazing. Absolutely yeah, long yeah, time, yep. Yeah. And she loved it. She knew all the kids by name. Yes, yeah. And she said some of them still come back to see her when they come back to town. Mm -hmm. so. No, they're a good family, and that, that's the kind of town that I hope this stays, yes. that you have a police chief and a fire chief who are friends, yeah. whose family live here, who know everybody, yeah. I thought it was, it's great. I think one of the reasons the uh, public safety building came out as well as it did was the police chief and fire chief got along so well mm -hmm. and worked together so well. That and the fact that the permanent building committee put so much time and effort and, yep. and had such expertise in the field, so. Um, I think that's a project that we can all be proud of. I know some people think it's too big, but um, as I told you at the last meeting, per square foot basis, we look pretty good. We were the lowest around. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, and I think on our finances, for example, the, the accounting department, the assessing department, the Treasury Collectors Department, they, they get along with each other. They do. And that makes such a big difference uh, in getting things done. When Town Hall operate. staff is dynamite. Yes. They are so good. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So um, give them all a raise. Yeah. <laughs> and you know the Town Hall will be uh, 20 years old next August, July, August. the current renovation. Uh, moved in in 1998. I remember um, having meetings at the temporary town hall. Yes, down on street, yeah. And then um, the library also, the library renovation was, will be 20 years old. So, mm -hmm. uh, and they've, they've been in good condition. They've been well maintained. Um, so I, th I think they, people come in and say, gee, I'm surprised these buildings are 20 years yeah. old. They still look good. But I was, a tr I was a trustee when we built the original new building, <laughs> which was uh, like 40 years ago, I think. Was that the uh, St. Edward's yep, Rectory? Yeah, St. Rectory. Yep, yeah. that's almost 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah. A lot of changes. There are, yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I always say to people, and people say, oh, you know, we lost this piece of open space. And I say, well, you can't just look at the losses. You have to look at the victories. And we've had a lot of victories. And mm -hmm. when you get 29% of the land in town is protected open space. I think that's remarkable for a town. And it's a real tribute to, to the taxpayers and, and in many cases to the residents who 
donated land or sold land at less than fair value, uh, sold it to the town, um, that we're able to have such a, a beautiful town. I mean, when you come down Main Street, one, one of the things people, newcomers or people that have never been to Medfield before say, gee, what a beautiful town when you drive down Main Street, all those old houses <coughs> that have been fixed up so nicely. Mm -hmm. and, and the uh, buildings, the public buildings downtown are nice, the library and town hall, public safety building, they're all very attractive. Yeah. So, um, we, we are lucky. And so I know everyone says, well, people come here just, just for the schools. I think they may come principally for the school. We didn't even know about them, the schools when we came here. Yeah, and you had six kids, so you should have known. No, but them. we didn't then. We only had four. four. But okay. um, we came here because my husband traveled, and it was right between 128 and 495. Yeah, okay. And several of our friends said they came. They didn't know anything about the schools either. They right. came. Yeah. It was anybody that traveled a lot needed that connection that with connection. 128 and 495. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't think of that because you think of Medfield as being somewhat isolated. And it because was. Because it's down on a major road and has no public transportation. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you noticed down in uh, Walpole now, they've torn down that, what used to be the uh, uh, Finnerty's Wake yes. or the Rebel or where, and there was restaurants in the middle of that whole block. Where a certain young man we knew used to live there, used yeah. to work there, remember? Yes, yes. And it's going to be a, uh, yeah. I guess, commercial on the first floor and then condos uh, or wow. apartments above. And I'm sure that would be a, a instant hit because it's, you can walk to the train Absolutely. station. And you can hear, of course you can hear it 24 hours a day too, so. Yes. And a lot of traffic on that corner. Yeah, yeah. Tough corner. Yeah. But, um, you know, if you live in Boston or Cambridge or those uh, places, so. you, you're used to that, so it's not a big deal. So, um, but I, uh, um, I just wonder now, they've taken some of the parking away, one on that parking lot on the right there as you go down 27. Yeah. They said it was never permitted as a parking lot and they shut it down and I don't know what'll happen there. I assume I probably know. somebody will put more apartments Wait in Wait for there. a couple of weeks and see what happens. <laughs> yes, yeah, or a couple of years, the way things work. So but you're looking forward to the new year with a smile on your face? Uh, yes, 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 I have. Uh, personal decisions to decide on what to do with with myself. So, you know, I've been all the finished 43 years of February, so I uh, have to decide how much longer I want to stay. Well, how much longer they'll let you stay. That's right, they haven't caught up with me yet. Now, I threatened to fire you many times. <laughs> you could, you just couldn't get the second vote. <laughs> I probably could have. You always said, I please could. fire me, fire me. <laughs> yes, I tried to vote with you to, get, to give you the second vote. You said you don't get a vote, so, so I'm still No, here. 23 years is a long time. It is, yeah, yeah. Um, I was skinny and had uh, Your brown, brown hair, hair. I came, yes. Yeah. So, so. I remember and that. Now, now it's blonde. And we had to, back in those days, the newspaper people had to leave the room when they interviewed. So yes, when the selectmen uh, were interviewing you, we, uh, CB Dowd and I had to walk out, and you held the door open for us. And CB said, I'm, I'd vote for that guy. <laughs> she was very impressed. You never know, whatever works. Yep. <laughs> she, CB was a good woman. Yes, yes. Do you have anything else for the people to, at home today? Oh, we've got to save something for next month. Okay. So we'll have a better idea, and the budget should be starting to come in. Yeah, you will by then, another yeah. month. Yeah. yeah. And then we can uh, talk about the new year. Huh? Well, we will. Yeah. Okay, people at home. Well, thank you for watching uh, Medfield TV. Um, I hope you'll tune in in a, in a month and uh, see what Mike's got to offer by then. We'll see something new, maybe. Maybe some good news. I hope so. Maybe some philanthropists will come and buy all this new stuff for us and we don't have to pay for it with tax money. But you never know. You can hope. You can hope. <laughs> What's in that water? What's in that cup? <laughs> you thought it was just coffee, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it's always interesting to hear what's going on in Medfield. And I thank you very much for listening. And thanks for watching Medfield TV. Medfield TV, community shows.